Hello guys, welcome back to the channel if you are a regular viewer and welcome if you are a new viewer. After a couple of videos building the Airfix Spitfire we are back to some armour today and I thought I'd pull this uh, old Tamiya Chieftain Mark V out of the stash. I got this nice and cheap at my local Hobbycraft store. I didn't pay £21 for it, um, I forget how much it was but it was nearer £10 basically by taking advantage of a, an online price match that they had and then uh, Hobbycraft randomly send you sort of five pound off vouchers and things like that. So I used that as well and then you know, took it home for, uh, I think it was 11 pounds perhaps. This is an old Tamiya kit. Um, sometimes I feel like I specialize in those. This is from 1975, but nevertheless, it is a solid kit. And like all these old Tamiya kits, I've really enjoyed building this. As we start off the build, I will say that obviously from the thumbnail, you can tell that I've painted this in the Berlin Brigade Urban Camo. I know this is a Chieftain Mark V and I know that they didn't wear that camo, it was the Mark Tens that did, but I'm okay with that. I'm trying to use up my stash rather than add to it, so I didn't really want to go buy a um, 60 or 70 pound Meng Mark X kit when I had this one laying around. So yes, it's not historically accurate, but you know what, I had good fun. As you probably saw there, as I built the lower hull, there are the battery uh, markers in the bottom of it and the holes in it too. Classic earmark of an old Tamiya kit. You can see some slightly rough edges on some of the pieces there, which are you know, a bit of an indication of the age of the kit, but there's nothing major. I've seen new kits which are worse than that, to be quite honest. So to give you a bit of a background on the Berlin camo, why I built this kit, the British, of course, had a presence in Germany, in Berlin, um, after World War II, during the Cold War. And the standard camo scheme at the time for these chieftains, as we can see on the front of the box from Tamiya, was the sort of uh, the deep green and black camouflage, which of course is not really ideal for the urban environment. So a few different styles were tried. And of course, in the urban environment, we expect more straight lines and squares and rectangles and so on, as we see buildings and windows and doors. So eventually this kind of um, splinter scheme was chosen. And of course the colors, white, a light gray, brown, are very, very common in the urban environment. Now this scheme was applied to all kinds of vehicles, not just uh, to the Chieftain. So the Land Rovers in it that you can see, um, and various other vehicles as well. And there are quite strict rules about applying this camo. So the size of the blocks is supposed to be the same across all the vehicles. I think it was about 18 inches. It shouldn't be scaled up or down because, of course, there are fairly standard sizes for those kinds of things in the urban environment. Equally, every vehicle, every Chieftain, for example, that was painted in this had to be painted identically. And that was done so that the enemy, the Russians, couldn't determine how many vehicles there were. Because of course, if you've got slight variations in the uh, scheme, maybe one tank's got a black bar going up the middle of its uh, side skirt, you can start to identify those vehicles and count them. Whereas if they've all got the same, you don't know if you're seeing one vehicle 10 times or 10 different vehicles or, or whatever it might be. Having said that, you can see slight variations between the vehicles in um, archive photos. I couldn't find out exactly when the Berlin Brigade camo scheme was abandoned, but it started around 1981. So going back to the build, you can see as we make the top of the tank to the lower hull, we have the open sponsons. We can see the, uh, the cutting mat there through them. Rather than cover those sponsons up, what I've decided to do is put a um, sheet of styrene at the bottom of the turret. I'll paint that black on the inner surface before I glue it on, and that should prevent us seeing anything through the turret hatches. In terms of painting, I gave everything a coat of NATO black. Then my plan was to build up the camo colors, starting with white, then moving on to grey and then finally the brown. Rather than trying to pick out the areas that would be white, I gave the entire kit a coat of white. The exception there is the engine deck, which seems in the photos to be the base colour of green. 
and the lower hull as well and the wheels are also the same green colour. The wheels were left off for painting but the side skirts were attached. That's the advantage of them, they can be clipped and unclipped without gluing. And then in terms of masking, I basically had to mask off everything which would remain white. I paid special attention here to make sure I got a nice square cut at the corner of the masking tape. I did have to take a little bit of liberty here with the pattern because of course uh, the Mark 10 is slightly different to the Mark 5, um, particularly around the turret. So I had to just uh, interpret it a little bit um, in some places. Here it is with all the white areas masked up. And then the blue-grey paint has been applied. This was my own mix using uh, Tamiya XF19, which is sky grey, with a drop of XF18, which is medium blue. I generally put this all over the vehicle, but as you can see perhaps on the front there, um, I knew that area would not have any blue on it, so I, I didn't bother painting down there. Then of course I'm applying the masking tape again, leaving the original masking tape in place, but now covering over any areas that I want to remain in the grey-blue colour. This was slightly easier than the first round, because I didn't have to make sure that the tape was exactly the right length. So here, for example, it goes over the existing masking tape, but that's absolutely fine. So once that's done, any areas that are not masked should be the areas which will be brown. This is definitely a case of thinking twice before painting. Finally, I applied the brown paint, which is a mix of Tamiya brown with a little bit of white. Um, that's XF10 with a little bit of XF2. Then it was time to remove the masking tape. There we go guys, there she is. I was really pleased with the way this came out. There are a couple of minor blemishes and a little bit of overspray in a couple of places, but on the whole, I was really, really pleased with the result of this. I was then able to unclip the side skirt so that we could add the wheels. And the tracks. Before putting them back in place. In terms of the tracks, they are the old style rubber band tracks. I gave them a coat of a sort of metallic grey mix with brown colour, which didn't come out very well at all to be honest. Luckily the majority of these tracks are the rubber pads on the outside, so I painted those with AK acrylics, and you don't see much of the tracks anyway because they're hidden by the side skirts. Once that was done I gave the entire kit a gloss coat ready for decals and weathering, and that was Tamiya TS13. There are not many decals on this kit, and of course mine are sort of a what if anyway because I'm using the ones from the Mark V even though it's got the Mark X paint scheme, but again it's fine, it adds a little bit to, uh, a little bit to the kit without being 100% accurate, but that's fine.
In terms of the weathering, I used some sepia oil paint thinned with odorless thinners to create a pin wash. This was applied around raised detail and recessed areas to give that idea of fake shadows. It was quite hard to choose a colour for this because of course we've got the dark brown all the way through to the bright white, but I felt sepia looked good. I also used some oil paints to create a dot filter. This involves putting dots of various oil paint colours onto the surface of the model, particularly the vertical surfaces, then streak downwards, either on their own or with a brush lightly dampened with uh, some uh, white spirit. With the oil paint weathering given some time to dry, the entire kit was given a matte coat. Once that matte varnish was dry, I added a very light dust coat to the model, making it heavier at the bottom and thinning it out towards the top. This was a very thin mix of Tamiya XF52 and XF19 light grey. And with that the model was finished, so let's look at the final result. So there we go guys, that was my Chieftain Mark V in Berlin Brigade camo. It's funny actually, this is only the second post-World War II vehicle that I've built, other than aircraft. Uh, the other one was the Warrior AFV, which I built last year sometime. My main area of interest is World War II, and I didn't think I'd enjoy these vehicles so much, but I've enjoyed both of those builds. So if you do have any ideas and suggestions for other post-World War II tanks and vehicles that you might like me to build, uh, please do feel free to leave a comment below. I'm always interested in your ideas. I'm always happy to learn new things, especially because I'm, I'm not really familiar with post-World War II vehicles. So it'd be great to hear your thoughts on uh, interesting vehicles or interesting camo schemes and so on. So yes, I hope you enjoyed that video, guys. If you did, then uh, please remember to give a thumbs up down below. It really does help. I'd like to say thank you to all of you for watching and for all of your support to the channel and a special thanks to my Patreon supporters and YouTube members. These guys give invaluable support to the channel so thank you very much, it's massively appreciated. And on the Patreon page and the YouTube membership page there is lots of access to um, work in progress and updates on projects that are currently on my bench and so on. Um, occasionally I throw in sort of a um, sneak preview video and so on in there as well. So if that sounds like something you'd be interested in, then you can find links to join in the description below. My next video is likely to be another Spitfire update. So I hope to see you in that video. And until then, thank you for watching and have fun modelling.